Hey, welcome to my home. Today we're going to be talking about recording your acoustic guitar at home. This is primarily geared towards beginners if you are just starting out, so stay tuned. We're going to walk you through it. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas, and you can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to our channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, make sure to visit our Teespring store linked below where you can peruse our custom designed t-shirts. So I'm not really at home, although this is a very homey feel right here. This is actually, believe it or not, a corner of our historic downtown store here at Alamo Music in San Antonio, Texas. This is part of our recital hall. And uh, if you are ever visiting the store, you can see it too. And a lot of piano recitals have been done here over many, many decades. But we decided to film here because it does look very homely. And we wanted to get out of our kind of studio that we have here in the room so that we can show you, in fairness, a good way to record your acoustic guitar at home. So we have stripped down a lot of the equipment that we typically would use. And we're going to show you step by step how to get started. So let's go and jump right in. You're wanting to record at home. Maybe you're stuck at home like right now a lot of us are. Now, if you're watching this at some point in the future, we've probably graduated to some hermetically sealed society. But at this point right now as I'm recording it, we are basically in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. And a lot of us are sheltering in place or at home. And what I have seen, what we've just witnessed through sales and, and comments on the internet is... A lot of us are taking this opportunity to learn an instrument, get better at an instrument, really dive into the things that we love and enjoy. And for a lot of you, that means recording, but you probably have not done it before. So how to get started? Well, let's cut everything right now, push it all off the table, everything that you've been looking and adding into your carts online, and decide first of all, what are you going to do or what are you wanting to do with it? If all you're wanting to do is record an idea, you could do that with this thing. Most smartphones and laptops will basically allow you to utilize their webcams and their built-in microphones that are getting better and better and better with each generation to simply record something on the fly. So if you're a singer-songwriter, you're trying to put down an idea, know that what you have in your pocket can probably accomplish that. But if you're watching this video, more than likely you want to do more than that. You're wanting to capture audio, put it into a DAW or digital audio workstation, edit it, and produce a final result for others to listen to. Well, there's great opportunity to learn, and it's a long rabbit hole that you can go down, but here's my recommendations for getting started. First of all, let's look at what you're going to record with. Now, you don't have to have a tailor to record with. Today, I'm going to be using this 812 CE-12 fret, which is a fantastic guitar, but I want to emphasize a point at the outset. We're going to be talking about microphones. We're going to be talking about going direct. We're going to be talking about interfaces, uh, software that you can use and so forth. But one of the most important things that you need to know to start with is that you are starting with an instrument. And at the end of the day, you can't put lipstick on a pig. If your guitar sounds thin and boxy, your recording is going to sound thin and boxy. And you can try to do all of the EQ and compression and things that you can possibly think of to it. But at the end of the day, it, it really is whatever you're starting with that is most important. So know that if you want, a, a, I've said this for years, and this actually doesn't just apply to when you're recording. It applies when you're playing live as well. Know what you're starting with before you go through the rest of the signal chain because the outcome is really based upon what's going in from the beginning. So we'll be using this in the video. And there's a few ways that we can capture this and few options that you have when you're at home. So let's talk about those. First of all, you can go direct. If you have an acoustic electric guitar, you can plug a quarter inch instrument cable into the connection and plug that right in to an interface, which I'll show you here in a minute. That is an option. It's not your best option. In fact, that's not what any of those pickups were designed to do. Pickups on an acoustic electric guitar are really designed to allow you to play your music on the stage in a live performance without dealing with some of the realities of trying to mic an acoustic guitar in a live setting with monitors, feedback, not being able to move, things like that. That's what the pickup on these guitars addresses. But you can use it to record direct. 
I don't think you are going to be that pleased with the sound because it's not really the sound most of us want to hear when we think of an acoustic guitar. And let me qualify, that means and includes microphones that are part of pickup systems. So if you have an internal mic, like on an LR Bags Anthem or many Fishman systems that are out there, know that that mic is there to augment the sound coming from a pickup and give you a more live uh, sound, a more natural sound, but it's still not the same thing as a microphone in front of a guitar. And we'll talk about those, but the next part of your signal chain after the guitar and the cable is going to be your interface. Whether you're plugging a cable direct in a quarter inch from the guitar pickup or a microphone, you're going to need to go into some type of interface. Now this is a new Personas 96C, I think it is, uh, 26C. This is one of their new models that has USB 3 uh, compatibility. It's bus powered and there's a lot of different interfaces on the market that are available that we sell here at Alamo Music. Personas and Focusrite are probably two of the most common ones at a lower price point. So if you're recording at home, you're looking for something that is affordable, easy to use, and accessible, really. So I recommend looking at something like this. Now, this one goes for a little over $200. It's going to give you two inputs. It's going to give you phantom power, which is important. We'll talk about that. You have metering on it. All of these companies kind of approach it a little bit different with different preamps, different settings, different ways of adjusting settings from hardware to software, but they all effectively kind of do, do the same thing. And that's whether you're looking at something like this or maybe a single channel guitar only input, which also exists out there. So get yourself an interface that matches your needs, whether it's single input, two inputs, four inputs, whatever, based upon what you're going to want to record at once. If it's a guitar, one or two is typically all you really need. Your interface is going to go into a computer. Here, I have a MacBook Pro, and I'm an Apple guy, so I would recommend that you probably get something like that if you're able to. But really, most modern computers, something that's been around for the last three, five years, are going to be able to handle most of this hardware and most of the software. The benefit of going with something like a Mac is that you do get free software built in. You get GarageBand. But most of these interfaces, like this Personas, Focusrite, and others, also come bundled with software that provides you with a DAW. DAW, which stands for Digital Audio Workstation. That's what's going to take the signal that's coming out of the interface, that digital signal, and allow you to capture it and to edit it and eventually to produce it, to bounce it, to export it, however you want to say it, into a song that you can share through whatever medium you decide to do. So, so you want to have your computer, you want to have your interface, and then you're going to plug in. So now let's talk about how you want to set it up whether you're going to go direct, whether you're going to go ahead and use a microphone, and when you use a microphone, how you, or even direct for that matter, how you want to kind of set up the signal chain, because that is probably the thing that people miss most. And I'm going to talk about that at the end, so don't miss that part. So we're going to go from here. We talked about the, the direct input. Here are two microphone options, and these are very, very different. Now this one you might recognize because we use this in most of the videos that we record on this channel for acoustic guitar. This is a Warm Audio WA-47 Junior. There's also a 47 uh, not Junior, which is a much bigger version of this fantastic microphone. We really like this microphone for its warm signal and really just all around goodness it gives us when we're recording with it. A condenser microphone is what you would typically utilize for recording an acoustic guitar, pianos, and lots of other things. The reason for that is a condenser microphone picks up all of the delicate things that take place when you are recording or playing an instrument. So all of that nice high chime, all of the delicate parts that you might uh, have in an acoustic guitar piece, a condenser mic is going to pick that up very, very well. Guess what else it's going to pick up? Everything. Absolutely everything. One of the reasons we've chosen to kind of record in this corner is to illustrate this point. We're not in our quiet studio. We're actually right by a busy street. Despite the quarantine, there are people walking around, cars going by, buses going by. And when we record with this, you are going to hear the guitar and all of that. So when you are at home, if you are recording with a condenser mic, you're going to hear the air conditioning, you're going to hear you bump the desk, you're going to hear your kids screaming at Fortnite in the background, you're going to hear dogs barking and all of that stuff. 
because that's what a condenser mic is designed to do. Now you can deal with some of that with EQ, uh, your gain staging, signal to noise ratio, things like that. But at the end of the day, if you have a noisy environment, know that it's gonna be a struggle with this. What can you do to combat that? The best thing is to be in a quiet environment. At your house, here's a top tip. A closet is a great quiet environment and a de facto recording booth that you probably didn't even know you had. So if you have a closet big enough, go ahead and try recording in there. If it's a really small closet, send me a photo of you trying because that'd be really funny to see. So the other option that I wanna show is probably not typical for recording an acoustic guitar. It's typical for recording vocals and that would be a dynamic microphone like this. This is a Shure SM58. Now there's all sorts of microphones like it on the market. They're typically what you would see as handheld vocal microphones. And unlike a condenser mic, a dynamic mic has a much more focused kind of signal path or, or area around it where it's going to pick up the sound that's generating it. It's also not going to be as good at picking up all those delicate sounds, all of those little things that the condenser mic picks up, which in a noisy environment can be a good thing. Podcasters out there know what I'm talking about. Some started with a condenser mic and went to a dynamic mic for that very reason. It also has a few other things about it though. It's not going to have as strong of a signal as a condenser mic, but it also doesn't need something I forgot to mention, which is 48 volt of phantom power. Now I mentioned that on our interface, it has 48 volts of phantom power that you can turn on and you have to have that if you are playing with a condenser mic. But a dynamic mic doesn't need that. It also doesn't have the same level, input level, so you have to turn it up a little bit more and you might encounter some noise and some other artifacts that result, are the result of having to do that. So keep that in mind. But I wanted to bring this up as, a, as an option, not just for the sound noise issue that you're probably going to deal with, but a lot of you might already have one of these. Of varying quality price points and brands and whatnot, but there's a lot of people that for some reason already have a dynamic microphone at home, particularly if you sing. So can you record an acoustic guitar with this? Sure, you can. In fact, you might like that because of some of the sound that it gets you, particularly a really strong mid-range curve. And so we are going to record with both of them so that you can get an idea of what it sounds like. So now, when we're going to plug everything in, let's talk about one of the most important aspects when it comes to recording and a thing that a lot of people when you're starting out don't understand, and that is gain staging. Now I'm gonna give you two examples of this so that you can understand what I mean by gain staging. So first things first, if we're plugging in direct, the first gain stage or level that we're going to set is on the guitar itself. So the pickup system is probably a, an active pickup system, meaning it has a preamp and it has a volume knob that allows you to adjust and set the volume. So the first thing that you wanna do when you plug in is you want to set the volume on the guitar at a level where you think you want it to be. Now that may be all the way up, it might be somewhere in between, but you wanna set that first. Once you are then plugged into your interface, you're going to want to check where those levels are. Now for most interfaces, you're going to have an adjustment that's going to be a knob of some kind. Some of them will even have a little scroll wheel, or you can make a, changes in the software for this, not your digital audio workstation, that's later. But you wanna use your adjustment on the interface to then adjust your input gain. So you've got the mic or the, the volume on the pickup set. Now you're gonna see where it's at on here and you're going to bring it up to a healthy level. The thing I want you to think of is Red Dead. Not the video game, but red, if you mean, meaning if you hit red on here through the metering gauge, and it could be different things. On this, you actually have a meter on the front. If you have something like a uh, third generation focus right, then you've actually got a ring that's around the knob that goes from green to red. Anytime you see that red, that means you're peaking or clipping, and that's going to distort the sound. We don't want that. So you want to turn up till you have a good strong signal playing at your loudest volume on the guitar with the, microphone, with the pickup set where you want it to be, and then you want to make sure that you are down enough on your gain that you have a good strong signal, but it's not peaking or clipping with that red light that's going to come on. Next, you want to do the same thing in your digital audio workstation on your computer. In fact, you'll see your input gain coming in and then you will be able to adjust the levels, usually using a slider, but it varies depending upon the digital audio workstation that you're using, whatever the software is. 
but you don't want that to be hitting all the way up. That is, again, clipping. In fact, what you want to see on the meter is that you are hitting somewhere between negative 10 to negative 6 dB, maybe a little bit north of there. That's usually a good setting that's going to give you enough dynamic range. You want to be able to have a good input level so that the raw recording, before you've added compression or anything else, allows you to have good signal on your quietest parts and on your loudest parts without clipping the signal at all. Now these stages are important to understand because if you make a change at the guitar after you have the set, it's going to affect everything else down the line. That's why they are called gain stages. One affects the next one. So always keep that in mind and if you are ever getting too much distortion, make sure that you kind of work backward in that signal chain to see where you might have too much gain coming in. Now this applies to direct input like we just talked about, but it also applies on a microphone. Now remember, I talked about the condenser and the dynamic mic having different signal levels going in. One is going to be louder than the other going into the interface, but you're still adjusting the levels. The other thing is also the guitar. Depending upon how you're playing, you might be too loud. If you set your gain playing something very soft and then you record something where you are doing a heavy strum, you are going to overdrive the signal, I promise you. So, if you're going into a microphone, you want to do the same thing. You want to plug it into the interface, you want to play at your loudest, you want to see, based upon the proximity to the microphone and what you're playing, where those levels are, adjust so that you are not clipping the signal, and then look at where it is in your software and adjust accordingly again so that you are peaking at between that negative 10 to negative 6 dB range to be safe. You can also, by the way, record both at the same time. If you have an interface like this one, you can record two microphones in a stereo pair. You can record a microphone and the direct signal and blend them. There are all sorts of options, and I really want to encourage you to feel free to experiment and to not take as gospel something someone says on the internet as like, you have to use this mic set up this way. That's really not the case, and what we've learned through music is through a lot of experimentation, musicians have gotten all sorts of cool recordings using things that they weren't supposed to use, or doing things that other people hadn't ever thought of. So when you get into some of these more advanced techniques like using two microphones, using a stereo pair, spreading them and whatnot, there are things that you should read on the internet about that, and when it comes to the software, there are a lot of things you can do as well, like adding compression adding EQ, adding reverb, but before you do that, here's what I'm going to tell you. Monitor your signal through the interface or through the computer with headphones on. Get a good sound with nothing else. Record with nothing else going. And then when you have a good signal that you like, you can come back and you can EQ it and you can add compression, you can add reverb, you can do all of these things. But remember what I said at the beginning, what goes in is the most important. So if you have a good recording of a good sounding guitar, you're going to be happy at the end. So let's go ahead and plug all of this in and we're going to show you exactly what it sounds like with a quarter inch connection and then the microphones. So let's do the quarter inch first.
So I know you could hear the differences between just recording direct with the pickup that's on here. Great pickup, but it's really designed for live performance versus having the microphones, whether it was the dynamic microphone or the condenser microphone. I'm going to say the condenser microphone is much preferred, but use what you've got. If you don't have one, get the interface first. That's what's more important if you already have a dynamic mic, or even if you're just going to plug in direct, that'll get you going. And then build your system from there so that you don't have to just go out and spend a ton of money right now or sacrificing what you want. My other recommendation is if you're going to use a condenser microphone that's going to capture your guitar the best, learn about mic placement and also make sure that you have a quiet environment in which to record. Otherwise, it's kind of all for naught. So I hope that helped. This doesn't by any means answer all of the questions when it comes to recording. We haven't gotten to a lot of the specifics because like I said, it's a very deep rabbit hole that you can go down. But this should get you started, allow you to begin recording and experimenting so that you're off to the races to finish chasing that rabbit down the hole. At the end of the day, we want to help facilitate you in making music, enjoying your guitar, whether it's hobby or professional or even semi-professional. That's what we want to do. So we're here for you. Go to our website, alamomusic.com, chat live with one of our associates there, and they can help you find the right equipment to suit your needs. At the end of the, guitar, the day, the best guitar in the world is the one that you're making music on, and now, hopefully you're learning how to record with it as well. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you.